All right, and uh, we are here on the platform. You know, we had Chris Hopkins in yesterday, uh, and he promised to come back, and he did. Maybe, as some of you suggested, I was a little nice to him, but we got into the RV Yemeni story with him, and that's gone global. Um, but we were talking in particularly about, uh, particular about his new role as Minister of Police and what he's doing about ram raids and youth crime. And uh, this is certainly shaping up as a major, major election issue. Now, the Minister, and I thought rather waffly terms, said, oh, they're going to look at the reasons why kids commit crimes, put money into getting kids into work or training or some useful activity rather than nicking cars and driving them into dairies to steal cigarettes. Um, which seems to be a career choice for many people at the moment, and then putting their exploits on the interweb. Um, but Labor's approach is let's look at the causes of the little, the little darlings, let's try and stop them associating with gangs, and we'll create a rainbow world of unicorns, uh, love and kisses. Well, the ACT Party doesn't tend to approach it like that. The ACT Party's come out and said, let's put ankle bracelets on the little toe rags and stop them being criminals. Joining us now to discuss this policy in the wider context of youth of, uh, offending and, and uh, lawlessness, we're joined by ex-Justice Spokesperson MP uh, Nicole McKee. Uh, Nicole, welcome to uh, the platform. I think it's your first time with us, isn't it? It, it is, Sean. Good morning and thank you for having All me. All right, I'll try and be gentle with you then. Um, why would you put an ankle bracelet on a teen offender and what would that achieve? Well, I think in the first instance, we have to look at what it is that is occurring. And we've got youth crime where the crime itself is getting really out of control, becoming quite violent, becoming vicious uh, and is affecting a lot of people's lives. So when you start looking at the data on this, Youth offending, of course, is those that are age 17 and under. And what ACT are calling for to, I guess, complement what the government has proposed with their Better Pathways mm -hmm. uh, announcement yesterday, is that we actually need to show some sort of consequence to the behaviour of the youth that are offending. And this means putting 11 to 14 year olds on ankle bracelets if they or have been or are capable of committing serious crime. And the reason why we're saying this is because when you look at the average amount of convictions that youth have in New Zealand, it's 11. 11 different convictions for youth aged between, or well, like aged under okay, 17. Okay, so if you're so in the system, the average number of offences you've committed can get up as 11, which seems high to me. That's, that's right, that's really high. And we think that a lot of this is because there have been no consequences to the actions, nothing where uh, they actually stop the kids from misbehaving in any way. So we're effectively saying, yeah, look, we understand you have to look at the bigger picture and you've got to make sure that the youth have a, a better way of and, and opportunities for themselves. But they also have to have some consequences okay, to I'm the actions. Okay, I'm trying to figure out if they're not on home detention and you cannot put a minor on home detention in New Zealand, right? We could always change the law for that. Uh, okay, are you <laughs> saying that you would consider home detention and ankle no. bracelets for you? Okay, okay, so let's just no, work no, through no. this. Like, so you sure, put an ankle, so is... ankle bracelets, to my understanding, Nicole, are there to monitor people who are on home detention and ensure they comply. So if you can't it's put a, a mi like... minor on home detention, why would you give them an ankle bracelet? What use or good would that be? Again, this comes back to encouraging good behaviour, right? So when, what we are seeing is that these youth are getting together in groups. Some of them are quite large. They're going out with each other to commit the ram raids or do the harm that they are in their communities. Once you put an ankle bracelet on them, you actually know where they are. So if they're on a curfew and need to be home, then they will be home if you can see that they are with their, with their uh, ankle bracelet. If they're meant to be at school, you can see where they are. If they're out with their mates committing another ram, ram raid, you can see that they were at that place at that time. Now, that's going to stop them from hanging out with their mates because their mates aren't going to want them there if they're a walking Judas, so to speak, you know. So it's not so much about putting them on home detention, but knowing where they are, making them accountable. Okay. So we would have to be. have a whole, a whole raft of people, police or, or civilian people, monitoring all these kids and where they are. 
and knowing if they were meant well, they, to be there or not, right? So that's a whole well, new bureaucratic... Well, they have to monitor... They have shown they're quite capable of doing it. There's been an increase in ankle bracelet monitoring of over Yeah, but that's because there's been an increase in home detention, but you're not putting young people on home detention. You're just saying it means we can keep an eye on them. I mean, you might as well put Ram Raider or Youth Criminal write it on an indelible ink on their forehead. That'll stop their mates hanging out with them. Yeah, I think we need to look at the bigger picture, though, Sean. You know, we've got these kids that are repeatedly, and when we're saying we've got 17-year-olds with, on average, 11 convictions each... Yeah, yeah, but I cannot for the life of me, Nicole, I cannot for the life of me saying how putting an ankle ankle bracelet on someone who isn't on home detention really achieves anything. So you're, are you suggesting then, Sean, that in order for a person to be have or to have an ankle bracelet, they have to be on home detention? Well, I'm just saying, not yeah, if you're not going to actually legally restrict these young people's movements, right? All does you're doing an is ankle saying, bracelet not restrict their movements? No, it though, doesn't. Sean? It just That's means you can monitor right. their movements. But if they're not subject yeah, which, to a court order a or a punitive them? sentence, which does restrict them, right, and you cannot and put I, it put a criminal in home detention. I'm just trying to see what the point is, and I can't. If I can go back to one of Vax's main philosophies, Sean, which is about personal responsibility. Mm. It's one of the things that we were taught very young as children. And what I think we have now is a society of some children growing up, not realizing what personal responsibility or mm. the effects of their actions are having on our wider community. Instead of locking them up and throwing away the key, this is the next step towards ensuring that these youth do have an understanding of the consequences of their actions and it will get worse. Rather than waiting until the 18 year old, eighteen years old, Sean, yeah. and then just throwing them in jail. Because once they become an adult, they do become fully, uh, yeah. you know, have to have Well, to I could see this if you were actions, allowed so to put kids on, on home detention, say the only place you can go is to and from is school. You've got to be at home the rest of the time and we'll monitor with an ankle bracelet. I could get that entirely. But as current sentencing and as the law stands, you can't do that. So once again, I say all it is is a fancy, fancy GPS tracker to keep an eye on the kids. And to be honest, that's not the job of the state. That's the job of their bloody parents. It should be the job of their parents, but it's not working. And then what are we seeing? A massive increase in crime. So on top of what the government has announced, we need to also ensure that there are consequences for the actions for these kids. If we don't show them those consequences now at this young age, they're going to grow up to be very serious, probably violent criminals. We need to try and nip it in the bud when we can. And this is one way of doing it without giving them a uh, another offence to their record. Yeah. It's actually a way up and making them responsible. Yeah, Wayne's just texted me, he says, isn't a youth ankle bracelet just more street cred? Yeah, well, some might think that, and that's a bit of an argument that, that should be heard. Is it more street cred or is it a liability to the rest of the gang if you've got one person that is able to be trackable? And I think it's more of a liability than anything. One of the things we want to do is to actually give these kids opportunities, make sure that they are able to actually go to school and be educated instead of going out and about and creating crime. If this is one way we can do it and we can have a legislative change to allow it to happen with without giving the kids convictions, then we can at least set them on a pathway that allows them opportunities, but also gives them consequences for their actions. All right, I know you guys are very much into fiscal responsibility. What would your policy cost? How much is an ankle bracelet? How much would it cost to implement this policy? Well, if this is a, a uh, something that the rest of the country thinks is a really good idea, we will look to cost it up properly and do oh, so a cost you haven't benefit cost it up. Yet, so we it. haven't done cost benefit oh, analysis. Oh, we are we yet. are the party of ideas. We come up with all these great ideas, Sean, and then if the country likes it, then we will look to cost it up. Okay. If any policy that we have that goes full full fruit, then we've got to make sure that there is a cost benefit analysis. All attached right. To it. Um, well, I, we could all buy them an Apple Watch, I guess, and, and monitor them that way. Um, what other bright ideas does ACT have to reduce youth offending, uh, stop the ram raids um, and, and stop the gangs? 
Yeah, look, there's a, a whole lot of uh, different policies that we have announced over the last 12 months. Uh, again, our thoughts on where we could go to address some of the issues. Uh, one of the things that you would have been aware of, I guess, Sean, is the criminal proceeds, which is yep. taking the, the bling upon finding an illegally held firearm. Again, uh, we're quite disappointed that with the new criminal proceeds bill that's just come from government, they don't implement that. And we'd like to see that as an addition as well. Mm. It's an easy fix to lowering the threshold and taking bling. So that's one for the gangs. Another one that's currently sitting in the ballot box is government control, oh, sorry, gang control orders, whereby the government will put control orders on gangs about who they can hang out with, where they yep. can be, so, yeah. uh, and, and what they can do. With, with certain people. Uh, we would also look to turn the Inland Revenue Department onto the gangs. So the initiative, recent initiative of the government to look at the wealthy and how they can tax them more, we'd like to see them implement that on the gangs themselves. How are they getting their money and how can you tax it? Because currently they're tax free. And then of course, electronic monitoring of gang members that are on welfare as well. And what I mean by this, the, not the ankle bracelet, electronic monitoring, but electronic welfare card monitoring. So we know that when they get a benefit, their money is going on the essential items that they need to keep them and their families, um, have them survive and uh, and ensure that that money is going into the right place, which is for the benefit of the children, not on alcohol, cigarettes or pokies. So those are some of the new initiatives that we came out with last year. But most recently, we came out with a review on electronic bail rules, because as I mentioned to you earlier, we have 6,000 more people on electronic ankle monitoring at the moment. And we want to make sure that the right people are on there. So that will mean getting rid of the lowering of the prison target. Because if you're bad and you need to go to prison, we think you should be in prison. Okay, we and you can take all the spare strikes. ankle bracelets and put them on the teenagers. <laughs> put them on teenagers. All right, three but I still, I still want to come back because I haven't resolved it in my own head. If you haven't got a court order restricting the movements or putting a young person on home detention, I just do not see the point of giving them an ankle bracelet to monitor their movements because their movements are not illegal. Uh, no, and that will require a change in law in order to be able to administer ankle bracelets onto youth. But I okay, think so. That you want to change? Let, let's cut to the chase. Then you want to change to be able to put youth offenders on home detention. We want to change to be able to monitor where youth offenders are going, so that we make sure that they're not hanging out with the wrong people and committing crime. An ankle it's bracelet doesn't tell. Doesn't, an an ankle bracelet doesn't age. tell you who someone's hanging out with? Well, it tells you where they are. And if yep. they need to be in certain places, like school or at home, and they shouldn't be out in Newland at 2 o'clock in the morning committing a ram raid, then you'd know about it. It's not about, and this is the difference, I think, Sean, is you're treating this like we would say we will put this onto a youth and treat them solely like a criminal. It's not about that. It's about teaching that there is a boundary that's been crossed, that there is responsibility as a human to keeping your community safe. And this is how you go about doing it. It's not going to be that restrictive. It's a monitor um, and it's a complement to what the government right. Someone has said. just suggested, now, why don't a, you just put a tra said, tracking device in every hoodie? A tracking device in every hoodie? Yeah. <laughs> Sean, come on. Well, I, guess well, I don't, don't know that it's, that thing. would be any more or less useful than your proposal as it's outlined to me at the moment. Hey, one of our other proposals for you there, Sean, is about the uh, instant infringement or instant penalty notices for youth as well. And this, again, is one where they wouldn't get a criminal record. But if they were caught shoplifting, for instance, yeah. they would then be given an instant penalty, which they would have to... Works like an instant fine yeah, without yeah. money. So caught yeah. shoplifting one day, yeah. cleaning the graffiti the next. This is about showing the kids, and this includes the ankle bracelets, that there is a line... And once you cross that line, these consequences. Yeah, to but it. I still we want to make back, sure. Nicole, you've got, you still haven't got me across the line on this. So you have an ankle bracelet, which gives you the ability to monitor the, to the movements of an individual. But we do not yep. have court orders that can restrict the movements of minors or put curfews upon them. Also, you can't go here or there, or you've got to stay in your home. So I'm not sure exactly what the ankle bracelet is meant to monitor and how it makes any frickin' difference. The ankle bracelet 
is meant to monitor where the youth is. And if you have a youth that is offending, it keeps a condition upon that youth as to where they actually are. Oh, so you'd say, so, that so a judge can, would say, so that you, can you are sentenced to not be able be. to go to Newland Moor for six months. Yeah, and then if you're found that your ankle bracelet is in New Year, Newland's uh, in oh. the mall that you're not meant to be in, then you get you arrested know, there, and you get given another an ankle brace, bracelet. Yeah, okay. No, there will be consequences for what that. What consequences? But it's a matter of where are these youth? Where are they going? Why are they going there? And a lot of people have said to us, hey, why aren't you looking at the parents and, and uh, making yeah. the parents responsible? Because we want to teach personal responsibility to the next generation. I want to teach it to the parents so that they can teach it to their kids. I mean, sure, I but think they're not doing personally, it. Are they? I think There's we should make. I think we should make it. the parents of youth offenders liable for their crimes and to send them to prison. That would that would see people that. take a lot better care of their flipping kids, wouldn't it? Yeah, look, I think you could do that, but I also think that we have a section of our youth that are just totally out of control and it doesn't matter what a parent does. I think it's more valuable to teach an individual their personal responsibility than it is to put the blame onto somebody else. Be responsible for the actions that you've taken and this is how we're going to monitor that you do understand those consequences. Okay, okay Nicole, I've just got another text through. This is an interesting discussion. Can you please ask why these politicians are too scared to lower the age of criminal responsibility to perhaps 13 years? Yeah, that would be a good one. Um, and what I mean by that is because there's so many of our youth that are committing these major crimes. And again, I think it comes down to they just don't know the boundaries. Okay, well, Once when you say that would be a good one, would you support such a policy change, reducing the age of criminal responsibility? And is that act policy? It's not act policy, and whether we would support it or not would have to be a caucus discussion. Um, but I would, off the back of it, say no, I would not Why not to support it. Uh, well, age of 13, these kids still need to be taught how to live life and be good citizens. Um, you know, part of that is actually teaching them what is right and what is wrong. And what we've seen from this government is no teaching for what is wrong, but how to wrap around. Uh, I think it's more important that we teach these kids to be responsible for their actions. When they get to 18, then they should fully know. But at the age of 13, a lot of them are just running around in groups and doing what everybody else does. So if we can stop them running around in groups by things like having ankle bracelets on them, then maybe that will give them that step forward. Let's give these kids some opportunities and some learnings first before we start criminalising all of them. All right, I thank you very much indeed for your time, Nicole, and for uh, uh, boxing your corner and arguing uh, your point. And we'll see where this idea uh, goes. I thank you very much indeed for joining us on the platform. Uh, okay, thank you, Sean. Uh, that was uh, Nicole McKee. She is the um, Act Justice sp spokesperson. What do you think? We just make all the little buggers liable at 13 and send them off to prison, send them off to university for gang membership. But honestly, if you haven't got any restrictions on someone, why give them an ankle bracelet?